Lightning. A familiar sight to all of us. Lightning is an electrical breakdown of the air, a discharge through the air. Electrical breakdowns can also occur within power apparatus, and when they do, they can cost millions of dollars in destruction of equipment and in massive costs because of interruption of power. Since much of this power equipment requires insulating liquids, there is great interest in understanding the details of electrical breakdown in liquids. Researchers are continually seeking ways to characterize fully and, if possible, improve the electrical properties of insulating liquids. Despite this research, relatively little is understood about the fundamental processes of electrical breakdown in liquids. To qualify new liquids for use and to test existing liquids for suitability, new measurements and standards need to be developed which rely on an understanding of the breakdown process in liquids. Ultimately, researchers plan to develop models which predict the behavior of liquids based on their physical and chemical properties. Research at the National Institute of Standards and Technology is underway to provide the measurement technology needed to support such modeling efforts. At the Gaithersburg, Maryland site, a laboratory facility has been developed to measure the entire electrical breakdown process from before its initiation to after its completion. Researchers from Exxon, Rutgers University, the universities of Maine, of South Carolina, and of Tennessee, and researchers from abroad have used the NIST measurement facility to acquire data to augment their own research efforts. In a typical laboratory measurement, the electrical breakdown occurs between a pair of electrodes positioned inside a liquid containment cell. In this experiment, one is spherical and the other is a needle. As with lightning, the breakdown process occurs in a very short time interval. With liquids, that time interval can be from tens of millionths of a second to only a fraction of a millionth of a second depending upon conditions. To illustrate, just as lightning frequently starts from a cloud and strikes the ground, the electrical breakdown in the liquid grows from the needle to the opposite spherical electrode. Because of its distinctive shape, the structure is often called a tree. A uniform growth is observed at first, then a faster event often bridges the gap. Much energy is then deposited in the brightly lit column of gas or plasma connecting the electrodes. That bright arc is analogous to lightning. An acoustic shock wave moves away from the expanding gas column and is heard in the laboratory as a snap. It is equivalent to the thunder from lightning. The gas column continues to expand and eventually breaks up into small bubbles. Observations of such fast phenomena require state-of-the-art electronics and high-speed photography. A light source similar to an electronic flash for our household cameras provides background illumination. When voltage applied to the electrodes is in the form of a pulse, then the high-speed electronic camera can be synchronized with the breakdown. A sequence of pictures is produced which shows the growth of the breakdown process. The configuration is straightforward. We show the resulting photographs at the lower left and the view of the electrode gap at the upper right. The operator initiates a sequence of events. The high voltage pulse generator is triggered, as is the flash lamp. While the voltage rises, the light comes on, and the high speed electronic camera is triggered to photograph the fast growth of the tree. All this occurs in less than 10 millionths of a second. By varying the conditions of the liquid, its pressure, temperature, chemical and particulate contamination, 
a better understanding of the breakdown process can be obtained. It is by analysis of such images and associated measurements that needed data are provided to understand the process. Even more important than our understanding of the growth of the breakdown tree is our understanding of how it is initiated. This is particularly true for the application of steady state voltages as used in the commercial power systems. To understand the initiation process, a series of experiments have been conducted in collaboration with staff from the University of Tennessee. These experiments focused on phenomena known as partial discharges. Partial discharges are small events which do not lead directly to breakdown. However, over a long period of time, such partial discharges can cause a degradation in liquid insulation systems. To photograph these partial discharges, we need a continuous light source, such as a laser, and an electro-optical shutter to limit the light entering the camera while pictures are not being taken. DC high voltage is applied to the electrodes, and an amplifier designed at the University of Tennessee monitors the current in the needle. The magnified tip of the needle is at the upper right, while the resulting photographs appear at the lower left. The initiation of the partial discharges is entirely random, and that poses a measurement problem. If you don't know exactly when the event will occur, when do you push the button on the camera to take the picture? Because the events are so short and happen so infrequently, one could take millions of pictures but get no useful data unless some way is found to provide proper synchronization of the camera with the partial discharge. If we simply trigger the camera by sensing the initiation of the partial discharge, the camera will only take pictures after the initiation of the event because of the delays in the electronics. To get around these problems, NIST has developed a technique to synchronize the camera with the event under study. It is called an image-preserving optical delay. Its addition to the experiment permits us to observe the first stages of growth. The very sensitive amplifier detects the initiation of the partial discharge. At that moment, the image of the initiation of the phenomena is launched into the image delay system. Shortly thereafter, a pulse from the amplifier triggers the electro-optical shutter to open and the high-speed camera to begin taking pictures. Although the initiation of the event is over, its image hasn't yet reached the camera because the optical delay stores the image information in the air. Because of this image delay, the camera photographs processes which occurred before the camera was triggered. In this way, the camera is able, in effect, to look back in time and observe the moment of initiation of the partial discharge and then follow its growth. Using this and other new measurement approaches, the following picture of partial discharge initiation emerges. A process occurs at the tip of the needle which produces a small gas bubble. The bubble grows while the electric current exists in the form of short, discrete pulses. Just how the liquid's fundamental properties contribute to this initiation process is a topic of current research in the U.S. and abroad. All these measurements focus on one thing, the prediction and control of electrical breakdown processes in liquids. The knowledge gained from the use of the measurement techniques developed by NIST will greatly enhance our ability to classify the performance of liquids to be used in power apparatus. Such information will change the standards which we use to qualify liquid insulation and provide a more rigorous framework for commercial evaluation of existing and candidate liquids. This should lead to lower costs and greater reliability in present and future power systems.